Hi there everybody, Morgan with Event Answer here and today I want to show you how I put together this balloon popcorn decoration including the box and the popcorn kernels. It's super simple, inexpensive and adds a lot of wow to any event setup. So follow along and I'll show you how I did this. I started off by building the popcorn box first. So I have a pencil and a yardstick here, as well as four sheets of 20 by 30 foam core. And I'm going to narrow that down. So you know a popcorn box is usually narrower at the bottom and wider at the top. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm measuring two inches in from either side on the bottom edge of the popcorn box. I'm gonna take that mark and line it up with the very corner of the top, and that's gonna give me a really nice angle for my box. So I'm just gonna go along and take a pencil and mark that line all the way from my two inch mark on the bottom up to the corner on the top edge of the popcorn box. So just using a pencil for some really light marks here, and then I'm gonna come back with my X-Acto blade and cut those lines out. So I've got my cutting mat, a brand new X-Acto blade, and my knife, and I'm using the ruler here as well as a guide. You could totally freehand this if you like, but I just use the ruler to help with a nice straight line. And I took this in two passes. It's a lot easier to cut the foam core in two shallower cuts. If you try to take it sometimes in one full cut, the center foam part can rumple up and cause a really unpretty edge. So I like to take these in two passes and that gives a really nice smooth cut for the edge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat this step for all four side panels before coming back and putting scallops on the top edge of the box. So what you're looking at is the top edge of the box, which is 20 inches wide, and I'm splitting that equally between four scallops. So I've marked the halfway point and the quarters between that, and then I'm finding the halfway point between each of those. So I'm putting a mark every two and a half inches, and that'll tell me exactly where the peak of each of those scallops should be. Then I'm gonna come back and make a line that's an inch and a half down from that top, and that's about how deep my scallops are gonna be. So now I've got a bowl that is a little larger than five inches, which is the size of the scallop, just to have something to trace around. Now you could totally use a compass, but I find it so easy to just dig through my cupboard and find something that works. So I'm just tracing around that, lining it up on the center point of each scallop, and that's gonna give me a lovely even pattern all the way across the top of the box. I'm gonna come back with my X-Acto blade one more time, making two passes on each scallop. And I'm just gonna go all the way down the top, cutting each out, making sure I'm being very careful, especially with the points between the scallops, because I don't wanna overcut that. You will be able to see it on the other side. This is technically the inside of the box. Once I finished cutting all of it, and if the scrap pieces didn't come away cleanly, I flipped the piece over so that I was looking at the front side just to make sure I cut really cleanly those points because uh, that tended to be where the scraps got cut and my cuts weren't quite deep enough. After all the scallops were cut, I flipped the board over so this is the outside of the box along the bottom edge which will sit against the floor and I'm marking four equal sections along this bottom edge. So it's 16 inches wide and I'm marking every four inches and that will give me four equal sections as a guide to lay down the red tape. Now this is just regular red duct tape that I've aligned on that mark that I just made and then aligning it on the top in the crevice between the two scallops. By using these two reference points on the bottom and one on the top, it'll ensure that the lines going vertically are evenly distributed because the box is wider at the top and narrower at the bottom like you can see here. It means that they'll be equally spaced by following these marks. So once all the tape is applied with that little bit of overhang, I then went and flipped it over and came back with the X-Acto blade to trim up all of the tape on the tops and the bottoms so everything had a really nice clean edge and then I was ready to start assembling it. I took the first two sides of the box, laying one face down on the floor and the other facing towards me so that the red stripes are all on the outside and I'm going to create a butt joint on all the corners. So one side will be flat and then the other side of the corner you'll see a little bit of the foam. And I'm just going to be securing the inside of this using some clear packaging tape. But the most important part of this is making sure that the bottom is aligned to make sure that the box sits square on the floor and that the outside edge of all the corners are flush. This will make it really nice and seamless um, when you look at it from the outside. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and attach all four sides together to create this box. And then I'm going to come back in with a scrap piece of foam core that I had left over. I cut it down to fit on the inside of the box about six to eight inches down from the top of the scallops. And I'm going to put two of these down here to make a cross pattern and that will prevent the balloons from filling the bottom of the box unnecessarily. The final touch for the box is to apply tape over the corners. So just align the very center of the tape onto the very point of each corner, leave a little excess at the top, and gently fold the tape over making sure you're not wrinkling that. And then come back with an X-Acto blade one more time and following the curve of each of those scallops, clean up the top edge of the cut. To make the popcorn, I'm using my balloon inflator as well as a hand pump and my sizer box, which I'll have linked above. I've also got yellow and white 12 inch balloons and yellow and white 5 inch balloons. And I'm gonna start with a white one here and inflate it to seven inches. And then I'm gonna do a yellow to six inches. And then my three smaller balloons, I'll use two white and one yellow. And those are gonna be between three and four inches. Now these five balloons together are what's going to make up the popcorn kernel. To assemble the kernel, I'm gonna take two balloons and tie them together with a single knot. And then I'm gonna take another set of balloons, and it doesn't matter if these are small or large balloons, and tie them into a pair. And then with the final remaining balloon, I'm just gonna tie that to one of the pairs. So I've got a triplet and a double. And I'm just gonna take the two of those and twist them together to make my set of five. And then I'm just gonna mix up the color combination into lots of different kernels until I have 20 of them to fill my popcorn box. So I'm gonna gather all of them and start filling the popcorn box. Now I'm just leaving mine loose here. I'm not afraid of them falling out or someone touching them, but if you think this might get bumped, you could always attach these with fishing line or glue dots to make sure they kind of stay as one clump. Now I want some of my popcorn to be falling out of the box, so I've got a little bit of fishing line that I'm gonna wrap around one of my popcorn kernels in a figure eight pattern, and then just add a chain of three or four of them together and so that they'll drape over the edge of the box. I'm gonna leave a long tail of fishing line onto this so that I can tape it to the inside of the box. So here you can see the fishing line. And I've just got a little bit more of that clear packaging tape that I'm gonna attach the fishing line to the inside of the box. And I do wanna make sure I pull this nice and snug and tape it low into the box. And then I'm just gonna fiddle with the balloons until I'm happy with their placement as they overflow over the edge. And then with the couple of remaining popcorn kernels I have, I'm going to attach a safety pin through the very end of the nozzle of this balloon. Now my safety pins were too small because I kept popping my balloons, so I would recommend a larger safety pin and just be very careful with where the pointy end is because I definitely pop sun myself. And then I'm just going to pin these to my fabric backdrop in kind of a exploding fashion in a curve. Now if you were putting this up against a wall, you could absolutely tape these to your wall. But since I'm using the fabric backdrop, I'm just gonna go ahead and safety pin mine to the fabric for an easy install, straighten up the backdrop, and then enjoy this fun look. I hope you found today's project inspirational. This came together so quickly, it would have a huge impact at an event. This would be so fun in a school carnival next to the concession stand. It would really draw your eye to that area. You could also do this for an at-home movie night or a movie party. How fun would this be to walk in and see this inside someone's living room? If you give this project a try, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear how you did this on your own and what tweaks maybe you made to make it work for your event. If you enjoyed today's video, give this a like. It lets me know that you've enjoyed today's content and want to see other videos in the future of similar nature. Speaking of other videos, I've got some more over here, so take a moment to check out some of those other projects. I do balloons, event setups, backdrops, as well as event planning tips. So until the next time, stay creative.